All right, so I've got a copy of the work, the project, with today's date. You can get that out of the network folder if you haven't done so yet. And so I'm going to be working on that. I've opened up the command prompt. Remember the, the quick way to do it, shift, right click, open command window here. So we'll open up the command prompt as always. And we have a command prompt open so that we can then deploy it to, to different devices. Um, at this point, we've been looking at this project several times for several weeks. We should know how it looks. There's still things we need to um, fine-tune about it, like filling in content, but that's elementary. What I want to address um, with the project at the moment is we started to deal with some of the um, design aspects of the project in the splash screen, the app icon and such. What is still uh, nagging is that the project looks pretty basic, pretty boring. It's still the basic black and white or, or black and gray, right? It's not visually that interesting yet. And it's got the default jQuery mobile styling, which is functional, and the modern flat design, material design, but visually not that interesting or defined. What I want to do is take some time then to customize the, the colors and some other design aspects of the app um, instead of this plain old basic colors. And there's several ways to do this, of course. If you have taken any other of the web design classes, you know all about the element inspector, and we'll touch on it in this class, of course. But you know all about the element inspector that helps you figure out in your web browser what are the various components that something is made out of so that then you can edit it. Well, I can see these classes or IDs, and then I can write some custom CSS. Sure, that'll work. And we will work with that a little bit later when we want to customize some aspects like why is there so much space there or why does my title get cut off over here we'll deal with that stuff what I want to deal with a little bit more um, directly is we can work with changing the color scheme of the project pretty quickly we have something via jQuery mobile that will allow us to uh, create a design um, pretty well. So this is um, this is where we're going to go back to the web browser. Go, to, go, go ahead and go to the web browser and go to jQueryMobile.com. And here now I have to po apologize. Sometimes I teach too many classes; they run together a little bit. So you guys remind me. Have we talked about in this class? using the jQuery mobile theme roller yet? One person says yes, several people say no. Okay, I might have mentioned it, but we might not have used it yet. So, let's see. Let's see here when this loads up. jQuerymobile.com jQuery mobile has something known as the theme roller. It'll be an icon at the top as soon as this loads up which is going to be a way for us to quickly create a design, a color scheme for our app. So I might have mentioned previously, if you go browse themes, you'll see it, but now we'll actually use it. So if you go back to jQuery.com, and at the top, the first snap bar here, click Themes. It says, Welcome to Theme Roller create up to 26 theme swatches lettered from A to Z, each with a unique color scheme, then mix and match. So just click Get Rolling. And the way this will work is a very cool drag and drop interface where I have these basic color <coughs> palettes built in that I can work with to change, to change my colors. And here it's got three possibilities, A, B, C. 
If you remember from a while ago, we had data theme equals A, data theme equals B. The, the A theme is the basic gray. B was the black version. And so we are able to customize this. Now, before we do anything, I kind of want to reset what we've got to work with by going up to the import, click on import at the top panel, import up on the top, and just say import default theme. So you see, you'll see a button at the top, import, and then select import default theme and just select import. I just want to reset it back to this uh, because we have the A theme, the B theme, there was also a C theme there, but we probably weren't going to use it, so it was going to take up a few extra bytes of some storage space that we don't need. So here I'm just resetting our, our swatches to A and B. The default is A, so that means that all the elements in our design are automatically the gray and the light gray and the dark gray and the blue. If we choose in our code data theme equals B, then we would have the dark theme. The way we're going to use this is, notice what I can do is I have a variety of colors at the top, which I can, of course, mix and match to get any color. Let's say I drag, click the red color and drag it to the top header. And so behind the scenes, it's going to be writing code for me, of course. But here in a drag and drop interface with some WYSIWYG elements, I am able to go in and start now to customize the color of my project. Whereas, ha whereas I had a very basic um, gray sort of design, I can go in now and start to drag and drop colors over to create my, my project more customized to, to my particular design. So notice I can increase lightness and saturation. It gives me a different kind of color palette, maybe more pastel and such. And this is another example where I'm not exactly a graphic designer. I'm not exactly into uh, art and such, and that's OK. This could be your own unique color scheme, of course. Um, and you don't have to have a degree in this or any inclination of it. Uh, it's just, I'm just showing you here that then now you have the ability to start to, to work with new schemes. What I like also about this uh, theme roller is if you've worked in the world of graphic design, you probably heard about Adobe Cooler. This is their set of pre-made color swatches that often work really well together, by, made by pros. So if you click on Adobe Color Swatches, that pops up. And it says, these are some of the newest swatches. And the way it works is you have to then click on each of the colors you want. It would be nice if you can just select the whole swatch, like the whole swatch book. Let's say Vintage 4th of July. I click each of these colors. They get put into my recent color well. It's the latest ones right here. And then now I can use them in my project. So the theory, the theory about these is that uh, these are the colors that have been sort of pre-selected that work nicely together. So the Adobe Cooler swatches, you have various uh, pages that you can go through, look at them in popular, highest rated. So as I'm setting up my colors, I uh, keep uh, keeping pay attention also to the side over here. 
when you drop a color into one of these elements, you'll also see on the side various things you can affect. The, the defaults often work well, but then you can also go here. And I've noticed something that on most of these elements, they often have like a little drop shadow, a little text drop shadow, one pixel. Depending on your color, color scheme, it may look nice or not. Um, you know, like the button here, I see that there's a little bit of a of an outline. So if you change that to zero, you see it's there's no longer an outline unless you hover. To make it obvious, I can put a larger number. Do you see how those the text on that button changes? Five px, one px, etc. I kind of like to take off the uh, the text shadow to put zero in the second box, depending on the element you're working with. On some, it doesn't look that that good. Um, for example, I think it's even in the, yeah, it's even like in plain body text. Uh, that one I really don't quite like it there because then you're having a little bit of a text drop shadow on your main regular text that could be distracting. So I like to go to body text shadow and put them all zero there. On this left panel, you also have the ability to edit some elements that are a little bit easier to work with than dragging a color down, for example, page. The whole page itself, you can work with it here, headers and such. And then we have buttons, normal hover pressed. If you've got a button before you've clicked on it, it's a normal button. If you hover your mouse over it, it changes color. That only applies, of course, on a, on a web app where there is a mouse to hover over. Active state of the button. What does the button look like if it's been pressed? You can see that right here. This, this on and off looks like that. And this does take, of course, a little bit of artistic ability, but if you don't have it, that's OK. If you put something together that you like, that's good. What I'll do is I'll give you a couple of minutes. Think about developing two color swatches, A and B. A will be the default, so once we download this and set it up together, your whole app will then suddenly be transformed into this cool new design. And then we'll have a backup theme B to use if we need to switch out colors for different purposes. So let me give you a couple of minutes to work on this, and then we'll look at uh, downloading it and installing it in our project. So about a minute or so for you to experiment with that, then we'll go on. Did everyone get the, uh, the sign-in sheet? If anyone came a little bit late, remember to get the sign-in sheet.
So while you're working here, be careful not to refresh your page or to leave it and come back because you'll lose what you have. But at the least, what you can do is, notice if you click on the top right corner, share theme link, this is an, this is an auto-generated link that you want to copy. So from share link, click on that at some point. And this is a link that is going to then allow you to come back to this design that you were working with at a later point. But notice it says, important, we can only store this theme URL on the server for 30 days. Then it will be deleted. Download a theme to keep a copy of it safe. We'll see how to do that in a moment. So um, it'd be nice if they kept that theme indefinitely, but they don't. So I'm going to copy and paste that share link into a simple text document and save that on my flash drive, keep a copy of it. If I want to return to it before the 30 days, after 30 days then the link won't work. This is the unique identifier at the moment for that theme. In a moment, what we'll do is I'll show you we will download this theme, then we have to apply it to our design, and most likely we'll have to do a few tweaks because what we see in the design here is not exactly what we'll get in our particular project. So we'll see what we need to do about tweaking it. We will see about importing it in case we need to work with it again. Let's say we want to edit our, our design 40 days from now. Well, this link won't work anymore to take me back to my colors. So I'll show you then what we need to do is import our colors back into Theme Roller to continue to work on them. So whatever you have so far, you might not have the perfect design yet. That's okay. I'm going to move on. So I've got some color designs, A and B. You can, of course, make more all the way up to Z up to Z, you can make different color swatches and just do data theme equals J, data theme equals X, all the way up to 26 different designs. That's uh, way too many, I think. A and B work pretty well, but you have more, more options. And so here's how we apply this to our particular project. On the top right corner, if you click download theme zip file, there's a little bit of instruction of what you need to do. I'll explain that in a moment. And then there's a theme name. That theme name is basically going to be the file name of what we're downloading. So we can call this anything we want. I'm going to call it, for example, my theme. Just one word, no spaces. This will be my theme. And then this will download in a moment as a CSS file. Mytheme.css. This will generate a zip file that contains both a compressed and uncompressed version. The compressed version we want to use in our app, of course, because it's ready for production, it's been minified, it's been optimized. We have an uncompressed version in case we want to re-import. When we do this import, we'll see a little later, to do import we have to import the uncompressed version. So we want to save both and it comes together in a zip file. It says to actually use it, well, we simply need to call the CSS file. Uh, although, based on what this, the way this is set up, this isn't going to be exactly the way we do it. Notice their code in the head section. There's the meta viewport, then they're adding the custom CSS, then they're adding jQuery, then jQuery, actually jQuery mobile, then jQuery, than jQuery mobile JS. Uh, we have to switch this actually. We need to make our custom CSS after the original jQuery and jQuery mobile. Because the example here shows jQuery mobile structure 145. We're not using jQuery mobile structure. We're using jQuery mobile dot min dot CSS. This structure is like a skeleton. Uh, a very basic version of what jQuery mobile has. So based on what we're creating over here, 
then our jQuery mobile will work completely. In their example, for us, we're going to add our custom CSS, our custom theme, after the basic jQuery mobile CSS file. I'll show you how. So name that my theme or whatever you want. Click download zip. I'm in uh, Chrome, so I think mine's going to download right away. If you're in Firefox or another browser, it may pop up and ask you, what would you like to do, open it or save it? You want to save it. And wherever that downloaded to, most likely over to your um, over to your most likely to your desktop, maybe to mine went to the downloads actually. So wherever yours goes to, mine went to the downloads. That zip file, you want to save that. Put that on your flash drive. Keep it safe because we'll see what's inside of it in just a moment. I'm going to transfer that to my flash drive. What's inside of the zip file is an index file that sort of shows off what did you create. Don't worry about it. Inside of themes, then we've got jQuery mobile icons, my theme CSS, and my theme.min.css, and an images folder. The only thing really that we're going to need is the my theme.min.css. That's the minified production ready version of the theme that we just designed in Theme Roller. We don't need the My Theme CSS because that's the larger uncompressed version. It's a whole 4K as opposed to the Minified, which is a Svelte 3K. Then you've got this uh, icons. I don't believe we need that because we've, we, we're not using the basic jQuery mobile structure file. We're using the complete jQuery file which also means we don't need this images folder because that, those are just the default jQuery mobile images which we've already got. So for us what we need to do in your current project folder, the, the 719 folder, whatever your project folder name is, in the WW folder, you're going to drag a copy of my theme.min.css. You're going to drag that over to your project so that it's part of your project. I'm dragging that straight out of the zip file. Into my project folder, there's the index file, jQuery, all that good stuff. And my theme, that's the one we just made. If you called it something else, it's going to be something else.min.css, of course. But I called mine when I was downloading it, my theme. And all I simply need to do now is put a, uh, put a meta tag reference to that file in any HTML file that needs it, which will mean the index file and the M, the map file. So let's open, in Notepad, let's open the index file. Line 16 is the style sheet pointing to our basic jQuery mobile design. We need to then add to it our version of our styled project. So we're just going to borrow the syntax of line 16, which is a self-closing tag of link, rel, which is a style sheet. href, and it's called mystyle.min.css. We're doing it in this order because of the cascade, of course. Load up the basic jQuery mobile style, which is the plain old gray, but all of the basic structure as well. And then use mystyle.min.css to override the defaults with the cool new colors that we have chosen. To see if this is working, save your index. And then I think for me the fastest way 
is to simply then in the command prompt taco run browser. I want to run it in the browser to see if my new style works. There may be a little bit of massaging we need to do. We'll see how to do that in a moment. Let's see how mine looks. Oops, I see my mistake. My file is called mytheme.min.css, and I'm referring to a file called mystyle.min.css. So that's an easy fix. It's mytheme.min.css. So whatever the name of your file was. I was thinking my style for some reason, but I called it my theme. It's an easy fix, and then run that again. I could say uh, my alibi is I meant to do that. Here we go. So there's my project. I'm seeing the colors. It's pretty much what I expected. There could be a st still a couple of tweaks we can we can work with. Uh, for example, the pop-up screen here. I'm seeing that the background of the pop-up is that particular color that I chose, which ruins the illusion of my color here. Or actually, I think what I did with that was I had written some CSS to make it white because it was a transparent thing. So I suppose we could write we could change the color of that element to make it back to this beige color. So either or we've got a couple of ways that we can deal with that. I think everything else kind of worked well color-wise. And then of course if I open up the map, this I never I never set the uh, that CSS file to the map, so therefore it's not um, it's not colorizing at all. Oh, and this actually brings up something good to mention. Just a couple of weeks ago, Google changed their API for their map, uh, which it looks like now our map will no longer work. Google now wants us to set up an API key, which we'll talk about a little bit later, because uh, any website that had existed and was using the old API has been grandfathered, grandfathered in. And the deadline was like June 29th or something. And um, our project didn't fall within that grandfathering, I suppose. So if you try to use the map and you see the console, it's going to warn you about Google API map warning, no API key. We haven't provided our <coughs> unique credentials to use the map. There is a fix for that, of course, that we'll deal with. 
but if your map is not working, this is something about uh, that, that Google just changed their map API. So let's pause here. Did everyone get their, these colors to work overall? Because we had designed in Theme Roller an A and a B, it automatically changes to Theme A. If you want to use Theme B, we would need to set our code to data theme equals B. So for example, on my home screen, line 24, if I add data theme equals B, that will now get that will now activate theme B upon that section. I could add data themes to the whole section and it should trickle down everywhere pretty well. Or I'll be able to add it to individual elements if I go simply to the nav bar, data theme equals B. Just the nav bar in theory should change to the B theme. Let's see. Looks like it'll go pretty well. So I simply changed my first section to data theme equals B, and it did it. Those are, those are my alternate colors, but because I didn't do it for the other sections, it's the default theme A. I want to see how this fully looks like uh, on my device. I'll do Taco Run Android device. And then we'll talk about, if it didn't quite work, what our procedure needs to be to make some changes. So while I'm waiting for mine to come up here, uh, make sure yours works, then we'll go on in a moment. Remember also, if you're trying to run it on a device and it's giving you some kind of error, often it helps to uninstall the app from the device and then toggle run Android. Uh, within the error messages, at, in that instance, there might be a, um, an error about mismatching certificates. So that means that you've got a version of the app on the device that has a certain developer certificate, and then now you're trying to run it, but it's a different developer certificate, and it gets confused. Usually the easy fix for that is delete the app from the device, try again, and it should then put a brand new version of the app with your current certificate onto your device. And that's why it's a good idea to do all of this setup before we get started with the lecture so that it has the, the time to compile for the first time and then future updates should be faster. So I just want to see what it looks like on my device. Loading up my splash screen, loading up here with my A theme. Looks pretty nice.
or any questions so far? Let's say I'm testing my project on a couple of emulators or a real device and such, and I, I don't quite like the color. The problem, of course, is on the particular device you're testing on, it might not be the most accurate representation. And that is, unfortunately, not too much you can do about. Meaning your particular colors may be, you might have a very bright screen turned on, um, Maybe you change your contrast or color profile. Who knows? Maybe someone else has. So you're never going to be able to get the exact perfect colors on everyone's device. This is something uh, web designers have had a problem since the beginning. Everyone's screen is a little bit different. Even if, if some of you that also have an exactly Moto, uh, Moto E like me, for various reasons it might be a little bit different. So what I'm saying about color is you should try to shoot for as close as possible for it to be what you what you're trying to go for, but I can clearly see I like the saturation on my device much better than on my monitor here. Um, but if I wanted to make further changes, the, the process of this would be, because we've got, in our project, we've got the mytheme.min, if we were to open that in Notepad, which don't try it, but if we were, it would open it up and it would say this is a jQuery mobile project, etc. And it would have various um, easily readable things to work with, uh, but then at a certain point, the very last line, if you notice, well it's only 217 lines that we have to edit. No, they've minified it, and so past 217 it's one long line that goes on and on and on, and on off to the edge, very hard to read, very hard to find the part where you need to make your edits. So the minified version, that's the point of it, that it's been compressed, so that it's a little bit easier to work with, um, performance-wise. You might see some elements that you see here that might make sense, but you're still, your best bet is still going to be to work back with the theme roller. And let's say I had completely left theme roller, or maybe came back 40 days later, 31 days later, and nothing is here, of course. If I try to use my link to get me back into into here I have import um, or the link and so the way we would have to use import it's it's a little clunky but import is copy and paste the contents of any uncompressed jQuery mobile theme file to load it in for editing so that's why when we downloaded the zip file it came with all of these supporting files and the uncompressed version of the of the file my theme that version is completely uncompressed fully readable with comments and all of that so i could go in and make some changes into that code if i'd like but do you see the disconnect? This is the editable version, but it's not the one we've linked in the project. It's not the compressed one. So it's either or. You choose the compressed or the uncompressed version. But the uncompressed version, we need it in order for me to go back to Theme Roller and paste that code to import, and it brings back my theme, all my swatches, that is. I can further then make edits and say, well, actually, this particular color didn't work. This color is going to be way better. Not really, but I can change the colors, download it again. I would go through the download process again. The easy thing would be called to call this thing the same thing as before, so that it'll just override the old one. But if you call it something like my theme v2, obviously you're going to need to change your CSS, your HTML code, to point to this to this new CSS file. So you see it is a bit of a process, copying and pasting your code, making edits, downloading it again, and then when you do, adding it back to your project, if you need to make any changes with your project. I want to work with figuring out now some elements look nice, but then I still want to 
customize things more. We could either then, of course, like I said, edit the my theme CSS file, but we have on line 19 of the of the index HTML file, we have a reference then to one more style sheet that overrides the previous ones. Codica.external.css. That one's the last one in the list, so in theory it should it should be the final word in our CSS design. And so I want to write custom code right there to override whatever previously came. And what I would like to do is, in my case, and maybe for practice, in the about screen, I would like the about screen to not have a white background to match the white background of this graphic. Whereas everything else, I want it to still be my particular beige background, but on the about screen, I want this to be a white background. So we're going to shift gears a little bit to, to do that, to figure out what's the code that I need to write to, cust to further customize my design. This is when the element inspector is going to be invaluable. We've touched on the element inspector on previous days, last month, for example. But now we're going to use it much more because it's much more necessary. I'm going to stretch this out also as much as possible to just show as much of it as possible. And the way we would do this is we would use, I'm in Google Chrome, Firefox will work, but I'm in Google Chrome, any browser will work. And from the first row of icons up there, we've got Elements, Console, etc. Make sure you're in the Elements screen. So we often look at the Console, but for this we need to be under Elements. I've also got the um, uh, Device Toolbar on. That, that's optional, but I want to have it on so I can see it like a device. And then we're going to use this a lot. The first icon there, which is Select an Element in the page to inspect it. And again, a lot of you probably have some experience with this, but I'll take it uh, from the beginning as if you don't for, for a bit first. And the way this works is you click on that item, and then as you hover over various pieces of the design, they highlight in the code. They also highlight in the, in the viewport. So if I hover over the text here, it says that's an H2 element, which appears right here, H2, inside of article. And if I click the element, it fully selects it. And then it shows you what CSS is in effect to control its design. We read this. This screen can get very cluttered, so make sure you're looking at the right thing. There's the element aspect of it, which shows the HTML code. But then there's also the style aspect, the style panel which shows you then the CSS that affects that element. And we read it from top to bottom. Top is the most specific bit of CSS that controls what I've clicked on. That would be inline CSS at that level. Jumping back, well, there's H2. There's an H2 tag which has some built-in styling. Display block font size 1.5. That's why my heading 2's are that particular size. If I were to double click the 1.5, well not in this case it's the user style sheet, but most other items I would be able to double click to make changes. This is built in at a 1.5 M's. Backing up to that, inherited over here, we have UI page theme A. These are various elements that are affecting the design of that that we've clicked. So here I should be able to click and if I click to make some random changes that changed over here this is not permanent, this is not writing or rewriting our existing code this goes away if I, re if I uh, reload my, my screen 
And so this is a more of a playground to uh, figure out what I need to do or how I need to edit this. I guess it's not a good idea to refresh it actually. Let me pull that up again, sorry. But that element inspector is, a, is more of a sandbox, a playground, to figure out what we need to edit. Once we figure that out, then we'll write it permanently in our CSS file. We have to do a lot of sleuthing, though, a lot of detective work to figure out what do we need to edit. Because we're building on various frameworks, jQuery Mobile, jQuery, and this is all designed for us. So we need to pull back the curtain, reverse engineer what's there. And this element inspector in the beginning looks kind of overwhel overwhelming, but then it's going to be very invaluable. So I've got it back again. I've selected, just for as an example, the H2 right there. And it shows the various items from specific to general back here. Uh, section about page and so forth, page theme A, coming back from overlay, etc. That goes down. Eventually that goes all the way up. It's backwards, but it goes all the way up to the most largest element, which is HTML. HTML tag itself has some built-in CSS, such as font size 100%. Well, that's crossed out because then at a deeper level, the UI mobile UI-Mobile class took over, so crossed it out. It, it took over, so it's crossed out. Body had font sizes of 1M, but then that's overridden by a deeper level here. My theme, body, Kodika external 2, that looks familiar. Kodika.external.css line 2. There's a spot there with font family where we set a font size we set our font size of 105, which was then overridden. If you go up higher in the cascade, colors, text colors, etc. So it goes back up to the topmost level. We can also see on this bottom strip here, this is another spot that we need to keep an eye on to figure out what do we need to edit. This one we read from right to left, specific to general. So there's the H2 tag. It's clicked, it's selected, and therefore it appears on the right side style. If I back up, this is the, this is the next higher level article UI content. If I click on that, then that shows me all of the styling at that level of the cascade. This element is in this element. I back up another level, and notice how it's also highlighting it. Notice what highlights as I back up. That one is div with a class of UI dialog dash contain dot UI overlay dash shadow. It's a big one. But there's a, this is a built-in jQuery mobile class that styles that. You can see the styling on the side. That's inside of a section of about. That's inside of something else that is a is part of the viewport to overlay. You can play with some of these things like background color. To see how it changes dynamically. And then going back further, you'll probably then get to the basic HTML, the basic HTML tag. So the point of this crash course is to is to get smart about using the the element inspector to figure out what we need to edit. And in the beginning, if you have no experience with this, this is very confusing. There's no way around it. This is confusing. There's a lot of moving pieces. But as we do it a few times together, 
it should hopefully start to make sense. So my goal, my tangible goal is I would like to change the background color of this dialog box so that it's white, not the same color as the main background. So the way I would approach this is again, I would use this element selection tool, hover my mouse over various parts of the design, and I might not always get it right away about what should I click on to select. And if I click right here, that might make sense because that is the background of what I'm seeing. And if I click on it, I'm seeing article UI content and various CSS rules. And I need to keep a lookout for something perhaps that says background or background color. That's usually how something is defined in the background. The tricky part is that I believe in this particular case the reason it's transparent is because it has no background color definition and so it inherits a, an earlier color. We'll confirm that in a moment. But let's say I didn't quite know that so I would go up further in the cascade. I'm currently looking at article article is the intersection here, not including heading, remember, or header, that is, header is its own element, which is shown here, article inside of header. But down here in the cascade, if I back up to the previous, there's a div, role, dialog, if I look on the side, uh, I see background clip, but I don't see background color. I see background color here, but that seems to be deactivated, and it says inherited from section about. So maybe going back further. jumping ahead a little bit, this is what I'm trying to do. And so you see, finding the right piece of the code lets me, lets me do that. The way I did this is I manually... There's the, there's the most inline element which will help me figure out what I need to change. But if I click within element style, it opens up to let me write some code here. And as I start writing, for example, background, it's going to say, which of these CSS properties do you mean? Background image, background repeat, background size, background color. And what I do just very quickly, because there's a bunch of colors that could be chosen, you could select one of the 114 colors, or you, know, you could type something like red, which is quickly to type with one hand quick to type with one hand. Obviously that's not the color I want, but here I'm trying to figure out, well, what particular CSS code do I need? Perhaps UI-content, perhaps article, which sounds a little generic because we've used the um, article for, for a variety of other, other spots. As I look at the code, I also see UI dialog contain, child element UI content. What happens if I go there? What happens if I go to that particular CSS, add a background color? So it might be that this particular bit of CSS is what I need to edit. Again, I've been teaching this class several times, so you get a, you get a sense of what, what works. Right now it seems like I'm just jumping to the conclusion because looking at it, and if you don't have this experience, it's, well, how does he know? Why does that work? Again, it it's, comes with the experience. But what also helps in the element inspector is that there's all of these possible CSS rules that could be into play, that could be taken into play. On my projector, it might not be so obvious, but do you see that one of these is bold, and the others are not bold? This is the one that is currently active with this particular rule and these particular 
uh, properties, this particular selector with these particular properties. So that also helps me perhaps figure out what I need to do. So I'm going to give it a shot, and I can copy and paste this. If you don't see my particular thing here, again, don't try to find exactly what I'm looking for here. I had to, like I said, I clicked on an item, and then I backed up on the cascade, did a little detective work, changed some colors. It seems that that might be what I might need to change, and it can be done in a variety of ways, most likely. But I'm going to try it, then, that the class dot UI dash dialog dash contain and then the uh, descendant UI dot uh, dot UI dash content might be what I need to edit so I'm going to copy that and in my particular project I need to edit my codica dot external uh, CSS file So far I've got body, divs, for images and such. Um, I'll see, I'll add it after the body. I just copied and pasted that, and that needs the curly brackets. So I got that out of the uh, element inspector. This is a class. This is a, uh, this is a descendant of that. That's what the greater than is. This is an element that comes in, that's inside of this element. And so playing around with that inspector, what I want to do is background color, white. I'm going to save that. Perhaps a much quicker way to test this is to actually run it as a plain old website. It won't be fully functional, but I just want to see that it's uh, the right, if I'm on the right track, which seems it is. If I try to do anything else, Remember, in Notepad, we're not doing run Chrome, run Firefox. This won't work 99% of the time because now we've got an app. We've got to do taco run browser or taco run device. Simply doing this run Chrome most likely will not give you a functioning project. That's what I'm seeing here. It uh, looks functional, but if I try to activate the camera, it won't do anything at all. If I try to do something like opening that catalog, that won't work either, and my console will tell me what, what the heck is Cordova. Can't find Cordova. It's not a web project. But the point is, I'm just trying to check, is this very basic CSS tweak working? It seems to be working. Then I can further run it on a real device or in the emulator or the, or the taco browser. It seems that this is the correct code, so if you're a little lost, the short answer is this is the code you need to write to change the, the pop-up box's background color. So go ahead and open your codica.css file and add this bit of code. Question? Yeah. If you have a large project that causes a single class, would everything turn white then? Yes, every dialog box would then turn white because here I am saying basically any dialog box, make it white. In our case, it's one. But you're absolutely true. Everyone would change. Perhaps a better way then would be to set another class or an ID just on that dialog box to target only that dialog box. So us writing an idea or a class should help us specify it. So writing this selector should probably also allow us to do things like font size just to see what it looks like 200 percent. You don't have to do this but here, I suppose, what that should do is only that dialog box should have huge text. Yeah, it's right there. 
So this is the power and the complexity of CSS. Um, targeting elements of your design to change the default styling. This is a pretty complex one because again this this angle bracket, this greater than, he's saying this is a direct descendant of this previous element of here. Both of these are classes. And where do these classes come from? They came from jQuery mobile. Dot UI is shorthand for jQuery mobile. And so here we've made a, a selector, we've made a rule that will help us define whatever we want about this element, which is the pop-up dialog box. <coughs> Suppose if we wanted to do something also like the um, size of the H2. Here, I think we just need to do that. We're saying, or we should be saying, that the heading 2s here, and here's a way to test it, the heading 2s inside of this element should be defined this way. Let me confirm if that works before giving you the code. So here we've got same selector as before, but then we've got space H2. So this is a heading 2, part of the uh, UI content, which is descendant of this element, change its color there. And I believe with that, then we're able to change the line height and all of that. I think our line height's a little bit too big. Too much. There might be too much space above and below. We might work with line height or maybe padding or margin. So if you think the, the size of your heading 2, if there's too much space above and below it, once we've created a selector like this, we can write something like margin. We can do it different ways. We can specify margin top something, margin bottom something, let's say um, about 5% and 2%. That's where that element inspector also comes in for you to do a little bit of, of um, playing around with it to figure out what looks good. I didn't specify a margin on the left or a margin on the right because then um, uh, I'm just letting it inherit the whatever. I'm letting that inherit what came from before. Here's before and here's after. Maybe still need to tighten up the space a little bit. Here it is before any edits, and then here's a little bit of tighter space. And that's with um, playing with margin top and bottom.
So this can be pretty complex, but once it's properly set up, it's very powerful because then now this applies to every pop-up. Maybe I do want every pop-up to look like this. That's also That also could be the point. Every pop-up that I'm going to load up on my site, I want it to be, or my project, I want it to be consistent. So there's CSS to make the consistency throughout the project. We'll take our first break. I'll put my code in the folder if people want it up to this point, and we'll go on. The next thing I want to look at is we're working on this customization. I also now want to look at um, customizing fonts and such. Um, maybe even working with with um, custom font, uh, custom icons, and, and such. So it's uh, 7:25. We'll take a break until 7:35, and then we'll go on.